what the, the good news in the, in the current in the worldwide is everybody starts to talk about education. People are seeing education as an instrument for, to, uh, to build the global citizen. So uh, the important thing has to, uh, which has to be focused in the global, global uh, in the, on the worldwide is to bring quality education for global citizens with equality, peace, and human rights. Where are we in education today? We're learning and learning and learning. In five years from now, we'll be learning more. But, for example, in the beginning of the EWF, what we saw at that time, we're practicing it now. And what we're seeing today, we'll be living it in five years. Education, education, education as uh a very popular leader of this country said some years ago and this uh, phrase is still very very important today. I, my hope is that also at international level we all politicians, all different governments from different points of view in different countries do really realize the importance of investing money and new ideas, new visions in the education systems because uh, only a well and better educated society can guarantee what we have to, what we need to, to have in the present and for the future, freedom, security and development. It seems to me that we are in a much better position than we were 50 years ago, 30 years ago to discover what works for children and for adults in education and to try and provide it for them. I think the old notions of the certain things which we absolutely had to have in terms, let's say, of buildings or this type of resource or that kind of educational approach, um, simply because that's the way we'd always done it, are now breaking down, are being replaced by a much more pragmatic notion of what works because we can actually look at it and exchange experiences and discover what that is. I think good education is one that becomes a bit like good technology. You don't know it's there. Uh, it disappears because it enables the learner to get the learning that they want. So I think education itself is probably too systemized and it needs to actually disappear so that you can't see it. So good education shouldn't get in the way of good learning. Well, good learning is about being inspired. It's about being in a classroom where the teacher captures your imagination. I spend a lot of time going around schools in England uh, and watching lessons in action. And I see teachers every day who are inspiring their pupils to not only learn their subjects, but to really develop a love for them. Well, I, I do think that good education should be about uh, inspiration, about uh, making people believe that they can do more about making people think that they can do more. It should drive us uh, to be better, both in our profession, better as people, better in our relations, uh, just better in everything. Education should be seen from the perspective of rights, is the rights of children, and children should be given that opportunity to be able to acquire education, especially the marginalized groups, um, children of nomads, hard to reach children, and particularly the girl child. We say when you educate a girl, you educate a whole community and a nation. My view about good education is that it should be all-inclusive. It should be education that gives lifelong learning skills. The first thing is that we should be able to give uh, everyone a fair chance to learn, uh, a fair chance to utilize his knowledge, and a fair chance to get a uh, benefit out of the knowledge that he has. The education system should be in alignment with the labor market. So the labor market is, is changing uh, very rapidly, and I think the education system should have a mean to capture those changes and to adapt it in, in the education. That means a lot of changes uh, need to be happened and need to be a, a norm in education. 
uh, and I hope this this will be happen during this decade. Education should move more towards uh, freedom and personal exploration, and I also think that young people need to be credited and allowed to take on the world's challenges. I've always believed in the importance of student voice uh, or learner voice and I think to build on the aspirations of children and to build education around that is something whereby we can make education relevant to every child that's learning and I think we can get the engagement that might battle against some of the individual cases amongst the 58 million children out of school. Curiosity I think is natural in young people and I think one of the real uh, challenges and privileges of being an educator is that you have the opportunity to cultivate that. A, a really good educator has the ability to tap into the questing instincts in kids and let them be co-creators of knowledge. My aspirations for the next year, or next year as if you all, is to increase the fever of education in my country, to raise the bar of education in my country in terms of quality, quality particularly the quality of a teacher, so that uh, we can ensure that, yes, the interests of the teacher are taken care of, as well as the infrastructure and the entire internal milieu of the school where the teacher will be. Most education systems that do well have very high expectations for every student. They have sort of very clear goalposts defined. The, this is the sort of simplest thing. The hardest thing is to build the capacity for that, you know, to attract the best people in the teaching profession, to make sure that we give them the right support, the right development, to ensure that, we make, that every child benefits from excellent teaching, getting the most talented teachers into the most challenging classrooms. This capacity challenge is the hardest part, but in the long run, you know, the quality of education will never exceed the quality of teachers and teaching. But at the same time, you know, making education everybody's business. The people we leave out of the equation are students and parents. You know, they are, if you could draw on the parents as your biggest resource, you could actually change the world. Making parents a real part of the education system, opening, making schools the center of communities, center of societies, Easy to do, but, you know, it doesn't happen. Uh, school and home, they go hand in hand in terms of uh, preparing the kids to move uh, with a mentality of getting and achieving the highest education possible. Um, the families should play a major role in our part of the world, in Lebanon. Uh, it is playing a good role because every, every family wants their child to get the best education possible. But technology, is a leveler. It will make the world flat eventually. That I can be in a village in Rwanda and learn as much as somebody in the United States or somebody in Asia. I think technology has no borders and that's what is going to make a difference. And I think we have to try to use technology to be able to reach where we are going. Education in the future will be mobile. It won't be anytime, anywhere. It will be every time, everywhere we see that students are more engaged if teachers use technology to teach. And it's because the students are then empowered to search out their own knowledge and conduct their own inquiries based upon their curiosity. The highest priority is, uh, is access. Access for the girl child, access for the student in the rural areas, and access to, for disabled children. Uh, and I'm also using it uh, in terms of access to uh, the best or optimal infrastructure of education. A good education is the system that can meet the need of the people and produce prosperity in the country, peace and stability. And education contributes to this issue by educating the children how to be tolerant with the issues that they face them, how to respect other opinions, and how to study and grasp the subjects that they can study. Good citizenship 
is, I think, uh, one of the core mission of the education system today. And we should try to find out the right balance between very technocratic approach, technological approach to the education, with the education that provides the kids right answers, what is right and what is wrong, how to behave themselves in the society and what kind of values are widespread and common for the people who surrounds uh, the future citizens. Countries see that the quality of their students is their future. It turns out that what people in a society know determines entirely or almost entirely the long-run economic prospects of countries and not enough co uh, countries recognize that that's a serious matter. They give lip service to it, but they don't, in fact, push to make sure that kids are learning. I think we found again and again money clearly is important, but it's not the most important thing. There's often enough resources in most systems now, at least to make a start. And what we, what we really need is great leaders at different levels. Um, leaders, of course, among teachers. Um, but more importantly, among government and great government uh, champions, um, you know, really, really visionary ministers who can get behind reform efforts, uh, spearhead things, and really get systems moving uh, in the right direction. But I do think that globally, that we are, we are more alike than we are different. And I think we're all struggling with what a good education really is, how we define a good education from country to country, from place to place. And we recognize, the adults recognize, that we really can't even begin to see what the future for our children looks like. So how do we create learning experiences that really speak to that vision that we can't even really see in our own minds? Uh, one cannot but look at what is happening in terms of the religious intolerance that is leading to some of the challenges we're seeing globally. And there is no way, I believe, uh, to address that without a base education that is shared, some kind of a, a global minimum education standard that says this is the least every citizen of the planet needs to understand about the planet and the people on it um, to enable us start to, you know, accept each other and our differences, but more, more significantly to understand the commonality of the fact that everybody has red blood flowing inside of them. I think leadership um, that motivates, promotes the idea that education is a key center of or a key value in society, that that learning, that, that acquisition of capabilities and abilities is uh, the way to, or the path to success. I think, as a matter of fact, that leadership today in the world is not showing that example, and it's not putting education first. I think this, this kind of initiative, like the Education World Forum, looks at joining forces, but I think we really need to make a much bigger effort, not of joining forces at the head, by joining forces all over the place. We need teachers to go from one country to the other, teach in different countries. We need students to go from one country to the other to understand the problems that they face. Because if we want to have that learning and the acquisition of abilities for those kids that come up, we need to change the way we're uh, looking at schools and the way we look at education. At the end of the day, it's not what kind of world we're gonna leave our children, but what kind of children we're gonna leave to our world.